This is Jen with Spectre Baby USA, and we are here to be doing our live question and answer that we do every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And every week we have a particular topic that we are going to be covering, and we welcome your questions and answers or questions, excuse me, and, and we'll work to provide those answers for you. So today we're gonna to be covering replacement parts, what parts you need to be replacing and when. And of course, we, uh, we highly recommend that you chime in with any questions that you have. We love the waves, the hearts, the thumbs up. So, you know, keep that coming. Again, my name is Jen, and I am the senior IBCLC with Spectre Baby USA. We offer every Wednesday live on Instagram and our main Facebook page, Spectre Baby USA. We cover a particular topic at hand that is really important to our Spectre families, our Spectre moms and our Spectre families. So please feel free to ask anything that comes to mind, whether or not it is on topic. So thank you for all the waves and the thumbs up and the smiles and all the hearts and everything. It's fantastic. We do provide the video to be able to be viewed and shared after the fact, so it is kept live on our story on Instagram, and we do post it on our main Facebook page as well. So hello, hello, hello. We love all the, the waves, the smiles, the hearts. So let's really uh, get jump right into the topic at hand. Again, we're looking at replacement parts. What parts and when do you replace those? Because quite often we get asked that question by our families, by our moms, and it can be really confusing, right? It can be really confusing as to, you know, what parts do I really need to be replacing? Really, even the backflow protector, and we'll go through that too, what do I really need to be doing with this and how frequently? So let's go through that, let's start that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new accessory pack so that we can see how everything is packaged together. I am opening an accessory pack that comes with the S1 Plus or the S2 Plus. And th that particular model, those particular models, come with a, a 28 millimeter flange and a 24 millimeter flange. So that's why we have two different flange sizes that are in this accessory pack, okay? So on the actual bottom of the wide neck flanges, you will notice that there is a white one-piece valve. We call that a duckbill valve. And it should be, it should fit very securely into the bottom of the flange. So you really, if you give it a, just a gentle tug, it should stay nice and secure onto the bottom of that flange. So if you notice here, there's very little opening at the bottom of that duckbill valve. It is new, so of course it is gonna be nice and closed, but also keep in mind that if you do see a little more so of a gap, a gap such as that, that despite what the recommendation guidelines say, it could be warped or damaged, so that would need to be replaced. But again, you wanna make sure that whenever you clean these portions, that you allow it to air dry completely. It's best to air, allow it to air dry completely on paper towels or a clean dish towel that has not been used. Hello, hello, Paula and Steph, thank you for saying hello, we love it. We love it. And Kendra over there on Facebook, thank you for saying hello. Yay, Steph says best pump ever. We agree. We agree. Okay, so again, the gentle tug, you want to make sure that it's nice and secure because that is really going to be what's important to allow for the best uh, pumping output, okay, the most efficient pumping experience. And so that's one of the reasons why we really want it to be reiterated to our families as to what parts need to be replaced and when. So again, nice gentle tug, it should stay on there nice and snug. If it's slipping off very, very easily, it's either a couple different things. It could be maybe not dried completely. 
So really allow it to dry more, more completely on a uh, dry paper towels or a clean dish towel that has not been used. If you see a gap, it also needs to be replaced. Again, we talked about that gap, little gap that you're going to notice there. It should be nice and closed. So this is a new one, so you see that it's nice and closed. If you are pumping exclusively, you should be changing your duckbill valves every two months. Okay, every two months if you're exclusively pumping. If you're part-time pumping, like you are breastfeeding at breast, and pumping or you are pumping when you're only at work for example that's part-time pumping that's considered part-time pumping and that would be every three months so every three months for part-time pumping and every two months for exclusive pumping and so again we will make sure to put a little infographic on our facebook page uh, in within the comment stream so that you have an easily an easily identifiable <laughs> Um, depiction of when you need to replace these parts because we don't expect you to remember all this or to be taking notes while you're pumping or nursing or working or whatever the case is right now so don't don't you fret about that so again every two months to be replacing the duckbill valves that's a beautiful little one piece white valve every two months for exclusive pumping and every three months for part-time pumping Hello, Nicole. Hello, hello. We love it. Hi. So we have a lot of waves over here on Instagram. We have Yenny that says hello. We have Les that says hello. Diana, Sky, Jace, all sorts of people. We love all the waves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go through what's called our backflow protector. So on the back of your flange, your wide neck flange, we always recommend that you gently twist all the way so that it's nice and flush to that flange, what's called the backflow protector. Now this backflow protector is what creates the closed valve system pump. So what does that mean? That means that there is gonna be no bacteria that can be passed from the mother to the pump motor and back out to the breast milk, right? Which is really important because especially if you live in uh, climates that are hot or muggy, etc., it's really important that you keep a very hygienic pumping experience for the health of mom and for the health of baby. So this backflow protector not only allows for a good efficient pumping experience, maximizing your output, but it also ensures protection against anything passing from the mom to the motor and the motor to the mom or baby, okay? So again, you just wanna gently twist it in, make sure it's nice and flush, and to take it out, you just wanna gently twist that off. So a lot of moms say, well, why wouldn't I just, you know, shove it right in there. Well, it's plastic. And so anything that's plastic can be compromised if you're too rough with it. Um, I've heard some other mommies that say, well, my older kid, I left it on the ground and all of a sudden they stepped on it and oops. Yeah, things happen, life happens, right? So just be gentle with your pieces. So we have a question that says, hi, Jen, a lot of pumps have backflow protectors. Are they all closed system? Well, there are two different types of breast pumps, basically, when we're looking at more specifically a personal use uh, pump. So a single user pump. And a lot of those pumps are the ones that you are provided based on your insurance policy through what's called a durable medical equipment company, a DME. And a DME contracts with your insurance, your insurance policy and provider to provide you a personal use pump, a single user pump that's FDA approved for those purposes. And those pumps can be either considered open valve or closed valve, open system or closed system. So theoretically speaking, if it has a backflow protector system, it should be considered a closed system pump, a closed valve pump. But without really going through all of those, uh, all of those different brands and, and pump types, it would be a little bit challenging to give you a specific answer for each individual pump. 
We will say that the Spectra breast pumps are FDA approved as closed system pumps and personal user pumps. So a lot of moms will say, well, because it's closed system, doesn't that mean that I can, I can donate it and another mom can use it or I can sell it, I can give it away, et cetera. Well, again, it's really important that you keep in mind that for example, uh, specifically Spectra breast pumps are only FDA approved for single user, personal use. So we do not recommend selling, donating, or reusing a breast pump, Spectra breast pump that has been previously used. Okay, so that is a great question. I appreciate that question. So again, the backflow protector gently twist on and off. And let's look at the actual backflow protector. This is a three-piece portion. So this is what you would call almost a silicone membrane. And this silicone membrane, we do not recommend that you boil or, you, or you're too rough with this particular portion because it is it can be compromised, it can warp. So for example, don't put it in the dishwasher, don't boil it because it can warp, which would, would compromise the integrity of the portions, okay? So this silicone membrane fits on the smaller portion right here, and you wanna make sure that it securely fits all the way around, right? A nice, wonderful seal all the way around. And then this portion, once that seal is all the way around, you're gonna fit that into the larger portion. Now, a lot of moms will say, okay, it's recommended that these are changed every three to four months. That would be our recommendation. Whether you're part-time or exclusive pumping, unless you're noticing any damage or warping, you really need to be replacing these every three to four months. Again, it's really to ensure that you're having a good effect efficient pumping experience. And so if you're noticing a loss of suction, reach out to customer service, reach out to us. You can email, you can call, you can a private message on our Facebook page, and we can discuss and try to help troubleshoot those concerns or questions that you have. But a lot of time, times it is also a matter of making sure that your parts are replaced efficiently. So Mrs. Perez has a question over here on Instagram. Will you guys ever release smaller flanges for moms with smaller nipples? I need both 21 millimeter and 19. So that's a great question. We really appreciate the question. So for flange sizes, we do offer a 20 millimeter, a 24, a 28, and a 32. So for moms that are in between sizes of the 28 and the 24, there is the silicone insert, and I think I have one right here that I can show you. This silicone insert here actually fits directly into the 28 or the 24. And when you fit that in, you again, just like when we did the silicone membrane on the backflow protector, you really wanna make sure that it's fitting securely all the way around that flange. So this will fit into the 24 and the 28. This does provide about a 1.5 millimeter size difference on the flange. So a 24 would be a 22.5 and a 28 would be a 26.5 size flange. So that can allow for some more customization within the sizes. But again, we offer 20, 24, 28, and 32. And for moms that are in between the sizing on the 24 and the 28, you can use the silicone insert to be a 22.5 size flange, 22.5 millimeter size flange with the 24 or a 26.5 millimeter uh, size flange on the 28. So hopefully that can assist you, um, Mrs. Perez, with your question. Now I know that you had indicated you needed a 21 and a 19, so you might wanna look into using a 20 millimeter flange for the, the, the side that you needed 19, and the potentially using an insert in the 24 to provide you a 22.5 millimeter size flange on the other side that you need that 21. But again, do what's going to do work best for you. And we always, since your question, Mrs. Perez, is on Instagram, you can always direct message us and you can speak directly with myself or another lactation specialist and we can really work with you more specifically about your, your concerns, your needs, and your sizing.
Now those within another option would be on Facebook. You can private message our Spectra a certified IBCLC page, Facebook page, and we'll provide you that link also. And that is where you can direct message, uh, private message with a, a lactation consultant as well. So Jennifer over here on Facebook has a question. Can your flange size change over the course of your pumping journey? Do we know why? That is an awesome question. And this actually came up right before this live question and answer because we were talking about, hi, Jamie. We were talking about, uh, oh, I see Gabriella too and Nicole and Jennifer. We love all the waves over here. Uh, and I'll get to Instagram waves too. Hi, you guys. So um, that's a great question, Jennifer. And in all actuality, a lot of that comes not only hormonally, because just like in pregnancy, we notice how we go from one size to a much larger size. And then after the initial hormonal surges and after our milk supply starts to regulate after that six to eight weeks, and even sometimes moms are around closer to three months, we notice that our breast size starts to really adjust, right? And moms will say, oh no, I'm not making the same amount of breast milk. Well, no, not necessarily at all. It just means that your milk supply has really self-regulated. So you may not notice that your breast size is as big as it was previously. So to get back to your question about flange sizing, you might need one size earlier in your breastfeeding or pumping journey, and then you may need another size later on in the pumping journey or breastfeeding journey. So whenever a baby is nursing, it, the nipple and areola can actually expand three to four times the size. Okay, and some studies have even shown that to be less or a little bit more. And depending on how you're pumping and how frequently you're pumping, that can also adjust as well. So <laughs> it's kind of a multifaceted reason and answer there. And there's still some things that we need to research and we really need to look into to see what else is involved in this. Uh, but probably the answer that I could give most confidently at this point after about 15 years or so in the field would be hormonally and as well as just multiple different other factors that could come into play for the mom. Whether how frequently she's nursing, how frequently she's pumping, if she's nursing or pumping exclusively, uh, hormonal things, uh, if she's taking any other medications or supplements, so many different things. But absolutely, you can change sizes. And it's really important that you keep in tune with that as well. And we can make sure to provide on Instagram and Facebook a good tool that you can use to know if you're using the proper flange size, because that's really important too. And if you're having any pain, any discomfort, any swelling, you really need to reach out to us to see if you do need assist additional assistance outside of just looking at an infographic or looking at a particular picture, you can really know for sure, is this something that's fitting me correctly? So thank you, Jennifer, for that question. Hi, MJ. Hi, Cynthia. We love the waves. We love the waves. Brianna and Lonnie. And I believe that's Mauro and uh, Kirsten and Amanda. We love all these waves. Thank you. Raising my daughter. Um, so many wonderful, wonderful uh, waves and thumbs up. So raising my daughter has a question. So she says, hi, sorry, don't apologize. <laughs> I'm 14 minutes late, no worries, no worries. Can you comment on changing the flange size over time? So I'm glad that we were able to answer that question. Let me know. Ah, she's so funny, you read my mind. Jennifer, good job. You asked a question that somebody else had over here on Instagram, so good job. So let's go through and make sure that we're uh, any other ones. So um, so there's a question about that spectra part, parts are a little bit difficult to Find. Laura over on Instagram has a question that she feels that Spectra parts are a little difficult to find and she wishes that they she could get them in stores. And I will say, Laura, that we are working very hard on that. You can get our pumps through our website at SpectraBabyUSA.com. 
You can get them on Amazon.com. You can get them on Target.com. Also, BuyByBaby.com is offering our pumps, and I believe they're going to be working on offering our accessories as well. And it is it is a little bit of a process to get our, our parts into stores, and so you just stay tuned for that because we are working diligently on that. We know that's really important to, to our moms, and we are working hard on that. So just stay tuned, okay? We love it. We love it. All right, so let's go back to that backflow protector. So again, it is a three-part portion. You do wanna make sure that it is fitting nice and snug, okay? If you notice, see how it fits nice and snug and it is meets all the way around. So if you have a backflow protector that comes off extremely gentle, it might be that there's been some warping or some um, compromisation or com be compromised, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, of this silicone membrane, okay? Because if that becomes warped, damaged, or weak over time, you need to make sure that you replace that. So we do recommend that you replace the backflow protector every three to four months. If you notice any damage or warping in between that time, uh, then make sure to change that because it's just a guideline. We're talking about guidelines. So if you notice any decrease in suction, let reach out to us. Our customer service will really work with you to troubleshoot that. If you notice anything else, please make sure to ask us. So we have a question here. Um, Amy Bree, Ambery, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, I get replacement parts from a DME, so wonderful. So yes, reach out to your insurance provider and check your coverage of benefits and see if your insurance company will cover replacement parts because a lot of insurance companies are now doing that. And if that is the case, you can reach out to the DME, the Durable Medical Equipment Company that you got your, your Spectra breast pump through, and they will bill your insurance on your behalf for those replacement parts. So thank you so much for that comment. We appreciate that because absolutely, absolutely, your insurance could cover your replacement parts, which is really important. I do know that TRICARE is, is uh, uh, fantastic at that. They do provide replacement parts and some other ones do as well. So... One question that we have over here on uh, Instagram is why do the DMEs only offer 24 and 28 millimeter shields and replacement parts? That's a great question. And that would be something that I would discuss directly with a DME because we do offer replacement flanges in the 20, 24, 28, and 32. So it might just be the discretion of that DME Maybe it is the demand by which that they saw those sizes were needed and that's why they carry those. So I would discuss that directly with the DME and see if they can get, uh, they can get in stock of sizes that are outside of those sizes that are needed, that are needed. Okay, so MJ over here on Facebook has a question. She said, I heard to cut the tubing about one eighth. Is that true and how often? So I have seen that. I've seen it a lot in our, our Facebook mom group. I will say, let's look at this tubing over here. So this is, for example, this is how the tubing would come when you get the breast pump. Uh, this is part of the collection kit. I just opened a brand new one for this question and answer here. And so it's already, it's still nicely tied up, okay? If your tubing is slipping off of your backflow protector or your pump itself, we need to look at was the tubing compromised in some sort of way? Was the tubing boiled? Was it put in a sterilization bag? Were there any sort of situations where the tubing could have been compromised? And if that is the case, or if it's not the case, keep in mind that all of your accessories are covered by Spectra Baby USA for the first 90 days. So if you need a replacement tubing, like it's slipping off that easily, then reach out to customer service. Let's help troubleshoot. Let's talk through some different things that you can do. Uh, but also it is covered by the warranty that you have on your accessories. So if it's if it's happening within those the first 90 days, then we need to discuss about replacement. 
Outside of that, you really should not need to be doing that to be cutting the tubing like that. So if that is the case, please, MJ, reach out to us and let's see what we can do to assist. I will say, uh, personally, I started working with Spectra uh, about a year and a half or more ago uh, when I started pumping for our fourth. And I really haven't had any issues. I pump after every nursing session. I haven't had any issues with the tubing. And I, I use the S1, the S2, and the S9. So um, with that being said, though, every mom is different and every situation is different. So I hate to use cookie cutters, you know, answers or solutions like that. So reach out to us and let's see what we can do to assist. So let's go back through. We talked about the duckbill valves here should fit nice and snugly on the bottom of the wide neck flange. You should see that it is nice and closed. There should not really be any sort of gaps like that. If you notice that it's slipping off very easily, then you need to look at, is it completely dry or is it compromised? So if you're exclusively pumping, you need to be replacing these duckbill valves every two months. And if you're part-time pumping, you need to be replacing them every three months. Again, for the first 90 days, your accessories are covered under warranty by Spectra Baby USA. So reach out to us if it's during that time and you need replacement parts. We also talked about the backflow protector and how it's that amazing protection against any sort of bacteria going from mom to motor and motor back out to mom or baby. So it's a, it provides a good hygienic pumping experience. But it's also really important that the integrity of this backflow protector is kept in place because that's going to affect your pumping experience and efficiency. So you do not want to boil this, this silicone membrane portion as that can warp it and it can compromise the integrity of it. And you also want to make sure that you're replacing this backflow protector every three to four months. Now, if you notice any warping or damage before that time, please make sure to replace it because it will, uh, it will impact the efficiency of your pumping experience. So we have a question again. It says, I, how often, and I, I apologize, I feel like I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, Ambre or Amberly, <laughs> I apologize. I don't want to say your name incorrectly. How often should I be replacing all parts? I get a new pump kit once a month and I only pump a few times a week. Well, honestly, I don't necessarily feel personally or professionally that you can replace them too much. We're talking about a guideline. So if you're replacing it that frequently and you're able to do so, all power to you, fantastic. Because then you're ensuring that you're having a fantastic, efficient pumping experience every time you pump. But I will say that we talked about the duckbill valves need to be replaced every two months of exclusive pumping and every three months of part-time pumping. This backflow protector should be replaced about every three to four months unless you notice any sort of warping or compromised portions of it. So again, making sure that that silicone membrane fits all the way around the small portion and it fits into the larger portion. We also talked about making sure that you gently twist that backflow protector and keep it nice and flush to the flange and not jam it in. Okay, we also talked about that with the flange, the flange sizing, flange size is, is extremely important. You may need a different flange size from the beginning of your pumping experience. You're welcome. <laughs> Amy Bray, got it. Okay, awesome. I won't, I won't forget that, I promise. <laughs> Sorry about the mispronunciation. The mis how is the word? Okay, my goodness, I need more coffee, I guess. So we want to make sure that it's nice and flush. We talked about that you want this to be nice and secure. We talked about that the flange size is extremely important, that you may need a smaller or larger size in the beginning of your pumping and nursing experience, and you may need a smaller or larger as you go along your pumping and nursing experience. So it's really important that if you're having any pain, discomfort, swelling, reach out to us. You can direct message us on Instagram, and you can speak with myself or another lactation consultant, and we can discuss about flange sizing. We also have on Facebook, we have our, our Spectra Certified IBCLC 
page where you can direct message us and then we can assist on there. And then we also have our Spectra certified IVCLCs that we can refer to you that are closer to you so that you can go in person because it's so much better a lot of times to have that help in person, hands on. So we have lots of different ways that we can assist. So again, we will make sure to put various links and infographics and assistance. Uh, both videos on Instagram and on Facebook will be available after this live question and answer. We love the engagement. We love our families and our moms. So please just engage with us. We are here to help. We are moms just like you. Uh, the videos will be available afterwards. So uh, Mama to Kennedy. Oh, Love that name uh, on Instagram has a question she says is there anywhere to buy parts in store so we are working on that stay tuned but in the meantime you can buy it off our website target.com bye bye baby.com Amazon so just stay tuned mama to Kennedy we will we are working on that stay tuned so Ashley says over on Facebook, she says, is Spectra in Canada yet? So stay tuned on that. We are not uh, available to ship to Canada at this time because we are FDA approved for the United States and not Canada. So just stay tuned, Ashley, and we will make sure to, to keep you updated on that. You're welcome, Mama. So we have a uh, winter Emmy bro, Emmy Rose, I apologize <laughs> on Instagram. She says, what if I need a smaller flange than what Spectra offers? I have used 15 millimeter flanges from an aftermarket company. It seems to empty me the best. Does using a non-Spectra flange affect it? Well, again, you really want to ensure that you are using the backflow protector and that you're using as many portions as you can to really ensure that you're still having a closed system pump. So again, this backflow protector is really, really important in ensuring that you have a closed system uh, pumping experience. So Winter, what I would recommend is please direct message us on Instagram or you can private message us on Facebook. We have an IBCLC page on Facebook that you can direct message as well so that we can help you more specifically. Let's look at what's gonna work best for you. What we will say is that though we cannot endorse um, aftermarket parts that are not Spectra and we cannot, we cannot necessarily guarantee the efficiency of the pump, when you are using other parts, but we do understand that there may be sizes that are needed outside of that. So everything else is spectra, but the back, um, but the backflow protector doesn't sit flush, but it is snug. Okay, good, good. So that's good. So we just want, we really want to ensure that you still have that closed system pumping experience. So that's wonderful. And again, Winter, please feel free to direct message us as, as well. So hello, Erin. Hello. We have a, somebody on Facebook saying hello. So again, thank Thank you so much for joining us. The videos will be available after this time. Again, feel free to comment, to direct message, to private message us. We are here to help. You are absolutely welcome. We love it. We love it. Hello, Jenny. Hello, hello. Uh, so Brittany over here on Facebook says, do I need to replace tubing for a new baby? So keep in mind that your insurance should cover a new breast pump with every baby delivery. And if that is available, it would be highly recommended that you do so. And also keep in mind that the S1 and the S2 are covered for two years. So if you do need a pump replacement during that two year period, that get have that warranty, um, use that warranty that we have available to you. So it would be best to replace as many parts as possible when you are um, when you're switching from baby to baby, if it is the same user. And again, it is best to ensure that you have a new breast pump. So again, Brittany, what you can do is you can always reach out to us directly and we can talk more specifically about uh, your circumstances in terms of timing and what is available to you. So Paula over here on Instagram says, sorry, I joined late, no worries. When do I replace the backflow protector? So the backflow protector, unless it is warped or compromised, would be every three to four months. So we'll make sure to put the infographic and different resources, links, et cetera, that are available to you so that you have all the resources at your fingertips to be able to assist.
So thank you so much for joining us today. We always love the engagement. We love the questions. We are here to support you. We are moms supporting moms such as yourselves. So we, we love our families and we are really here to help support. So if there's anything that we have not covered or we covered and you, you need the information again or clarification, please just let us know. We are here to help. So I hope everyone has a fantastic day and just keep in touch. We'll be here to help. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.